Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I would like to demonstrate some of the advanced serial data analysis and signal integrity capabilities of GeoScope Client, which I believe are among the most advanced available in any open source tool today. We are looking at a 5 gigabit per second PCIe Gen 2 signal between a Raspberry Pi 4 applications processor and the XHCI USB controller using a 4 GHz active differential probe and a 4 GHz oscilloscope. The first thing we're going to do is take a look at the spectral content of the signal. Somewhat interestingly, if you're not familiar with PCIe, there aren't any significant peaks. What we see is essentially white noise looking across the entire bandwidth of the signal. And the reason for this is because PCIe uses a spread spectrum clock in order to avoid narrowband EMI emissions. So you may be wondering, okay, what does this modulation look like? Let's find out. We'll want a deeper capture since it's fairly low frequency, we'll say 10 million points. And we're going to need to recover a clock in order to look at the frequency. So we'll default to 5 gigahertz, and the PLL will tune from there. And then we can measure the frequency. So there's definitely something there. It looks a little bit noisy. So the first thing we're probably going to want to do is do some averaging on it. We'll do 100 samples. Should be enough to smooth that out nicely. All right, and if we stop the acquisition for a moment, we can see we've got a definite triangular modulation going on. And if we use a cursor, we can get the frequency of it. Looks like about 30, 31 kilohertz, which is fairly typical for PCIe. And we are modulating between 2.486 and 2.501 gigahertz, so about, uh, about a 15 megahertz difference in bit rate. So that was interesting, but we're probably more excited about the data. So let's get back to a smaller waveform so we can get faster updates and take a look at the data itself. So the first thing we need to do if we're looking at any sort of digital data is threshold the signal, obviously. So we'll default the thresholding at now that the signal is thresholded, the next step is to take a look at the 8B10B coding in use. So right off the bat, if we pause this, we can see that there are some control characters and some data characters. If we zoom in a bit, okay, there's two right there. We got some sections there. All right, but this doesn't really tell us all that much unless you're a lot more familiar with PCIe than I am. So the next step is going to be to take a look at some of the higher level data. So if we look at the PCIe logical layer, now we can decode the scrambling. And if we zoom in a bit, okay, that's the beginning of a TLP. We've first a scrambler, there's some traffic there. There's a DLLP here. Okay, that's starting to look like something a little bit more useful. Let's see if we can decode this more. There we go, data link layer. So what we have now is a nice protocol analyzer view that allows us to trace between physical layer and uh, upper level protocol decodes. We can use the cursor in order to identify packets of interest in the physical layer. Okay, so there's that, the, that, there's that ACK packet. And if we go over here, okay, we've got a TLP there, a TLP there, and obviously it works the other way around. If we zoom in a bit, we can select that TLP, and there we go. All right, but unless you're making your own PCIe stack, the data link layer is still not the most interesting place to be. So let's decode one more level. All right, this is where it starts to get fun. We're at the transport layer. Now we can see all of the TLP fields decoded and pull some interesting data out of them. So here, for example, we're looking at a memory read. We've got nothing super exciting going on here, just the address. So what we're looking at now is uh, 
the Raspberry Pi USB controller, which is connected via PCIe to the applications processor, and in this example has a USB Ethernet controller connected to it. So if we zoom in a bit on some of the TLPs, we can see what looks like a Linux ping packet here, the repeating incrementing byte sequences. Okay, so we're done looking at our application layer decodes. Let's go back to the physical layer and uh, take a look at the signal integrity. Typically, the first step is going to be an eye pattern. And it's obvious immediately that we've got a significant amount of pre or de-emphasis. In this case, it's 60 B of de-emphasis. So we can take that away if we want and see what the eye looks like without it. So the eye looks nice and open without the emphasis. That's to be expected. Now let's see what it looks like through a long lossy channel. So in this case, we're going to use some of the lowest quality coax in my lab, six feet of RG188, and we're going to put two of them end to end. So that's gonna be 12 feet of RG188, that's obviously going to introduce a phase shift, so we need a new clock off of that. Okay, so the eye is still pretty open after that long channel, definitely not as open as it was before, but we can see that the emphasis definitely did help a lot. So now let's see what it would look like if we didn't have the emphasis going on. Okay, that's a lot less pretty. So the emphasis is definitely helping, but do we really need 60 B of emphasis? What happens if we have a little bit less? So we can just go to our emphasis removal filter and say we want to remove 3 dB of that. So now we're going to look at what the signal would look like if it still had 3 dB of emphasis on it. And we're going to want to clear our sweeps. And look at that with 3 dB of the emphasis at the end of our channel, we've got a nice open eye without significant overshoot. So here at left, we see with the 6 dB of emphasis, even after this channel, we still have a fair bit of overshoot on some of these edges, and the eye looks pretty smooth with 3 dB. And so if this was the actual channel we were trying to run our data over, we can see that 3 dB of the emphasis would probably be appropriate. And finally, let's take a look at some jitter. So first step is going to be looking at the time interval error between our received signal and our recovered clock. And what you may notice at the beginning of our waveform is we've got quite a bit of garbage in there that looks like huge sudden jitter spikes, but it's always the very start of the waveform. And uh, this is a little unusual because our trigger is actually in the middle of the waveform. The reason for this is because uh, PCIe is using a spread spectrum clock, and we're always starting the clock recovery at 5 gigahertz, even though we don't know what the instantaneous frequency of the clock is going to be at the time our acquisition starts. And so what we're seeing here is just the phase shift of the PLL achieving initial lock. Sometimes we're closer to 5 gigs, sometimes we're further away. 
So if we don't want this to be cluttering our jitter waveforms, so if we don't want this to be cluttering all of our waveforms, all we have to do is skip the first, we'll say 75 nanoseconds, should be enough. And clear, and now we've got our jitter data. And now we can do the same thing with our emphasis removed. and extract our raw jitter from there. Let's take a look at a histogram and see what our jitter shape is looking like. So this is straight off the probe. We've got a rather interesting looking uh, three-peaked curve, so there's definitely quite a bit of ISI going on. This is not surprising. We have the emphasis. So let's see what it looks like if we take the emphasis away. Histogram of that. And so with 3dB of the emphasis removed, we've still got a bimodal curve, but it's quite a bit different in shape. And if we then take away all 6 dB of our emphasis, now we have a nice, smooth, more Gaussian-looking curve, which suggests that at this point our dominant factor is going to be a random jitter and uh, not the data-dependent jitter that we have off here with the emphasis. And, of course, we can do a spectrum of the jitter as well, which could be insightful. quite have 10 strong peaks here, so I'm going to hide a few of those. And yeah, three might be better. Four. Okay, and now we have a few more peaks than that. We'll, we'll say five. And we'll just slide that up a little bit so it's easier to see. Okay, so it looks like our main jitter contributions here We've got uh, something at 1 gigahertz, which is interesting. We've got something at about 500 meg. This is our 8B10B symbol rate. And then we've got 1 in 200 megahertz. The PCIe reference PLL frequency is 100 megahertz, so we might be seeing some noise in the PLL. This jitter might be caused by the phase corrections if the phase frequency detector is running at the reference clock frequency. And since it's a spread spectrum clock, there's always going to be some shift between the internal VCO and uh, the reference clock, so we could be seeing some jitter added by that. This could be a harmonic of that. But I'm not going to try and do full root cause analysis here. I don't want to make this video too long. So, thank you for watching, and I hope this was educational.